Welcome back to Namibia. It's day 34 and we have just found ourselves at the end of the dirt road. We can now say that the longest fuel push in ex-overland history is behind us as we air up for today's high-speed travels in pursuit of new memories. When you're down, airing up, which by the way is the first time we're airing up in a, about a thousand kilometers. So here's our plug. This is the fourth plug. And it has now been holding for about 200 miles. The gash kind of looks like this. It's actually probably the size of my finger in there, but it's like that, right? So I found out that if you put, I was putting my plugs in with the loop going in like this, like this. So I push it in. What I should have been doing is putting the plug in with the gap. So both of the plugs ends were going on either side. That seems like common sense, but it took me a while to get there. Uh, but as soon as I started doing that, I pulled out the old plugs, cleaned it up, and started putting the plugs in this way. Uh, it works. So, lesson learned. Our destination is the capital of Namibia, Windhoek. There we have a very important friend waiting for us, one that we desperately need. X Overland's Africa Expedition is proudly presented by General Tire and the X3 Tire. For whatever you do, General Tire delivers. And season six is brought to you by the X Overland Network proudly supporting the best stories possible for the Overland community. And by our official apparel provider, Vertex. In 2018, I was able to cross the Greenland ice cap with a group of men on the E7 expedition, led by Greg Miller. You four guys are just awesome, thank you. The entire team bonded as close friends from the experience, and that's where I got to know Dr. John and Torby Johannesson. As ex Overland, we were able to meet up with Torby in his home country of Iceland on the Nordic expedition. And while we bumped along the F roads of Iceland, I asked Torby where he would want to travel next. I'll let you guess his answer. Hey, we'd have to we'd have to follow in the steps of he is. Whoa! Whoa! Hop on the rail, my man. Yeah. Good to see you guys. Good, Good to, to see, see you. you. Just rolling. We're just rolling in. How is this camp? It's this, okay. Yeah, it's okay. It's good. It's good. I like it. Looks like the best thing I've seen in a long time. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> this is the first time Torby has met my family, and it feels great to have everyone together. Yeah, yeah, thanks so much for coming. Come on. <laughs> this is Ryder. Good to see you. You've got a big job ahead of you. <laughs> oh, really? We're like, yeah. add it to Torby's list. Add this one to Torby's like, list. We'll just put it on the list. Put this on the list. Put this on the list. Torby has a big job ahead of him with the mechanical needs of the vehicles. And since he's been sitting around for a couple days, he's ready to get right to work. Well, I think we'll just start from the beginning and work our way all around all these vehicles. We have a long list. The Sequoia roof rack needs tightening, bolts have rattled loose on all the vehicles, and they all need Loctite. Our AC isn't working in the Tacoma, and our one Sequoia rear tire needs a proper repair. I've watched Torvi work all over the world, and he is a professional problem solver, especially when you're in the field. He develops a plan and produces results with what is available at hand. This couldn't be more evident than with the jerry can holders. The aluminum has split and the fasteners are no longer in the plate. He reinforces the jerry can holders with uh, some, well, non-essential materials. Second piece. Ready for another, another assignment. With about 500 miles of the worst roads we have ever encountered, the roof rack needs the most attention. 
the roof bolts are tightened and the Alucab rooftop tent is re-secured. Let's walk along here, this side. They don't seem that tight. No. We swap out the tire that needs repaired for the spare, just for the day. Yeah. Here we go. Nice. Heads up on those journeys. Nice. And it's been a long day of tackling the issues, and the tire and AC will have to be left for tomorrow. So throughout, throughout this whole trip, we've been trying to get the AC unit working and with uh, Torvi's wise eyes, we think we do think that it's just a charging issue. It needs more gas in the line. That's what we're hoping it is. And today, being in Windhoek, Namibia, there is a shop called Safari Engineering, specializes in Toyotas, and they just opened. And we're gonna go see if they can solve our problems. 20 minutes later, we are at the best tire shop the campground can recommend. It doesn't take them long to make a proper repair on the tire. Confidence is super high on this tire and it's good to go for the rest of the expedition. They want us to back the truck in to take a look at their air conditioning, or air con as they call it. Their best guess is if they recharge the system, it will work just fine. Do I owe you anything? No. Is it okay? Yeah. Uh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for all your help. You guys are smart. <laughs> All right. We have bad news. Just on the way back. So they charged the system. Very awesome, working great. And then as we were driving back, the, the air got warmer and warmer and warmer. And then uh, by the time we got back here, 20 minutes later or so, right back to being hot. Air conditioner is not working. So we definitely have a leak in the system. The gas is just escaping somewhere. So if we can find that leak and maybe JB weld it or find out how to cap it, maybe we can get it working again. Cause it did work. That's the good thing. But it's not gonna work unless we can find that gas leak. Thought about the problem a little bit and then started investigating. And our investigation led us to a problem right, right here where our air compressor hose has the metal air conditioner hose, or sorry, air compressor hose is rattled on the condenser and it has actually put a hole in, uh, in the line. So that's why it can't hold the gas. So as soon as you turn it on, it just bleeds it all out very quickly and that's why we lost it within the 15 minutes of the drive home. So we're gonna pull all this out. We're gonna try and see if we can do a field fix on this condenser by isolating some of the rows and welding it and getting it shut. And then in the morning we can go back to them to the uh, pressurization place and get it repressurized and see if our fix works. But if we don't try this, there's no way that we'll get an air compressor to work for the rest of the trip. To reiterate, our air compressor line was a steel braided line and it was rubbing on two locations, not one. One in the center of the condenser and one on the corner. It's leaking right here. Yeah. Bunch of that. Torby, all you gotta do is just jam a whole bunch of sealant on this thing. Say three Hail Marys and send it. Feel it? It's cleaning it up really We decide to coat the problem areas in quick steel and let them harden. Hopefully it will be enough. We just have to try. Looks nice, looks pretty. After letting our fix cure for a couple hours, it's holding up to 100 PSI. Yeah, careful. Yeah, 
That's better than it failing. But the true pressure from the system is greater than two times higher than we can test. For the effort. It looks like it, but this is 100 psi. And it's supposed to take 240. Yeah. It will be last one to be. We will just have to put it back in, get it recharged in the morning, and see if it works. So this morning, Ashley and I have gone over what the next few days will look like, which is extremely exciting. So much cool stuff to go do. Uh, team is finishing up just the last minute fixes. So tires getting swapped, this the bad tire that got repaired is going back on the truck today uh, to keep our spare good. And then I'm taking this truck into the air conditioning place to get it charged to hopefully see if our fix worked. So once we know that, we're on our way. After letting our AC patch job cure overnight, we need to run it back to the local shop to recharge and pressurize the system again. The drive back to camp will tell us if our repair is successful or not. Yeah. It's too good to be true. Uh -oh. <laughs> don't jinx it. Yeah, don't jinx it. No, no, no. <laughs> I it's hate to say it. <laughs> it is too good to be true. Oh. What happened? It leaks. Oh. Uh, well, they charged it, but yeah. it does leak. Oh. Well, take for effort. See, get the team of the old college try. It looks like the challenges of Africa will continue to make us hardier and hardier. The Tacoma will stay in the lead of the convoy so that the passengers can travel with the windows down and stay out of the dust. Immediately, the roads get rough. And with the miles already, I hope these trucks can stay together. The Spitzkopf, from German for pointed dome, also referred to as the Matterhorn of Namibia, is a group of bald granite peaks, or inselbergs, located between Usakos and Swakomund in the Namib desert of Namibia. The granite rises to 5,669 feet above sea level. Welcome to Canyonlands. No kidding. Welcome to Africa, Torby. Thanks. That was a nice price. Yeah, I look forward to getting into camp and having a place to ourselves. All right, so we may go ahead of you because uh, we have the map here and we'll find a campsite. Okay, Sequoia, come on over to where we are. We're going to pick this one. We get all the sunset light over there. Yeah, this is going to be real nice. A new pace has been established for the next section of the trip. We have been traveling hard up to this point and are finally finding our groove. This newfound pace is welcome and is allowing us to dive into the African experience even more. Camp is early, and it's allowing us to try things we haven't had a chance to try yet, like making bread over a fire the way Adrian and Kristoff have shown us. The secret ingredient, apparently, is beer. First attempt at bread making in the wild. Yeah, I've never made bread in a Dutch oven or poiki? Uh, yeah, a poiki? No, I have not either. Meanwhile, Eli wants to continue his learning as a young team member, so Torvi has taken him on as a mechanic in training. The first job is to fix the loose latch on the trailer. Uh, having Torvi come on board has been fantastic because carrying the weight of making sure that the vehicles are maintained well was also on m my side, and uh, now, being able to hand it off to one of the best mechanics in the world to have him maintain the vehicles and look after that, I can, I myself have been freed up to experience more and feel like I can go do and put my mind in other places because the trucks are so well taken care of. 
I'm allowed to fix bits and pieces and monitor the cars, the vehicles, and the trailer. And I like my position. It's awesome. I'm doing my best, but it's it's hard in this heat. Drink delivery. Oh, <laughs> fantastic! Thanks. You're welcome. Ah, oh, looks nice. Hopefully, it's good. If not, I can add more mm. gin or tonic or. It's also awesome. Yeah. Good. Cheers. Cool. Thanks. Cheers. <laughs> You're welcome. Here's to a beautiful sunset. Mm. Fantastic. You want me to put it back in the truck? Yes, please. Ooh. Oh, hey, that look, that doesn't look bad. <laughs> right on them, their coals. You would. Um, might need the little grate. The first bread attempt is ready, and it's not bad, especially for a first go. But this isn't bad. Look at that. Hey. Well, yeah, give it a sim. Give it a try. Just a little bit. As long as the texture and the flavor is there. It's great. Mm -hmm. All right. And the broccoli. And the oh, man. Look at how amazing this yeah, is. The, pepper, or the, the potatoes or the squash. <laughs> yep. That there yum, yum, yum. Slowing down has also allowed for more time around the fire. Nostalgia kicks in, and so do the stories of Torvi and I's Greenland expedition. You can turn them too tight, and then you can break a CV axle for everybody that then they need to fix. And then you feel real bad about it for a long time. Like even now, you still feel bad about it. No worries, man. It, it didn't take long to fix. Just a... <laughs> Seriously, though, it actually didn't. It wasn't your fault. 40, it, it was my fault. <laughs> I drove in, you know, then we're like, okay, well, let's circle up for camp, right? Yeah, but... You have the entire Greenland ice sheet to turn around. <laughs> so I have the idea that I should turn the wheel all the way and turn into it and then park it. The rubber, you know, was already gone. So was the... The, the lubricant? <laughs> okay. So <laughs> it was just ice. I, I, yeah, snow. Yeah. yeah. I knew knew it was going to, you know, leave us at some point. I uh, I carry one of those ball bearings around. Oh, okay. Have I told you that? No, no. I no. have one of those ball bearings that there's, came out of the There's six. Treaty. There's six in it. There's only six? There's six, yeah. Yeah, well I have one of the six. Okay. And it packs around, I just carry it. And it's a it's a reminder to me of mechanical sympathy. Where is it? Well, no, I lost it. Another lesson <laughs> in mechanical sympathy. The, this thing just keeps on teaching. As the fire and evening wind down, it's time to have dessert after eights. Now, it has come to our attention that you were not officially sworn in to the after eight club. Okay? Mm -hmm. So we have streamlined this process from a marriage ceremony down to a quick thing, okay? So if you would like to participate and be a part of the After Eight Club. All you must do is hold up the four fingers and say, I solemnly swear. I solemnly, solemnly swear, swear to uphold the rules to uphold the rules of the After Eights. Of the After Eights. There you go. Huh. That's it. <laughs> do we all have to link arms now? Yeah, like, oh, he yeah. has to link arms. Yeah, link yes. arms. Right yes, yes. linking, linking Good arms. Shoot. Oh, eights. linking arms, yeah. Yes, yes. Yeah. welcome to the club oh, oh, oh. of the After Eights. Yes, yes, great. Oh. Okay, <laughs> awesome. Yeah, well, I remember last year when we were in Iceland, we were chatting in your truck. I was like, where do you want to go travel more? And you were like, I want to go see Africa more. Noted. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't expect this response. <laughs> Not at all. Oh. 
Yeah. Well, it feels good to be out and running. So. Yeah, it's awesome. We'll see what the next 25 days of travel really puts us. We're going to be different people by the end of another 25 days. Oh, yeah. One way or another. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Beautiful night last night until about four this morning. Then this wind came in and it you could hear it coming for 10 seconds and then whoosh and shake the trucks. And then it'd go away and be dead quiet. And then you'd hear the next wave and they kept coming and coming and coming. And it would shake, it would just shake everything. Thank goodness we were in these alu caps and not like a traditional rooftop tent with rain flies because we could hear the rain flies of everybody else just flapping around. These do very well in the wind, thank goodness. But regardless, we didn't sleep that well from four o'clock on. All of us are just like, Ugh. So we were gonna hang out and camp and enjoy our time, but the wind has motivated us to move on. The wind and the dust. So we'll uh, get packed up. Everyone's like, yeah, let's get in cars. We get packed up and go to the next spot and see what we see. Coffee's still good this morning. Thank you, Richard. Today's goal is a short drive day to get into our camp early. And this might be our shortest drive day so far. Our destination is White Lady Camp. This morning, we will be leaving the Spitz Club area, heading north. We have a short drive today. Should only be a few hours. Um, and we will arrive at the Brandberg Mountain, which is the highest mountain in Namibia. Just when we have a lot of time to make shorter miles, we also hit some of the very best fast track on the trip so far. And we can't help it, we have to let the horses go. I like the new pace, the new uh, distances. I know it won't last forever, but I'm enjoying it right now, big time. Yeah, bring on the African massage. And if you're comfortable to go up 10, just to help smooth out these bumps a little bit more. Oh yeah. It is 12.35. Noon. It's noon. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Hopefully we get some elephants coming. Ooh, that'd be great. So you can see them. After nearly 40 days of traveling, we are grappling with something new. We have arrived into camp early. This area is at the base of Namibia's tallest, Brandberg Mountain, and has an abundance of desert wildlife that visit the watering holes here at the lodge. Ooh. always a fun dynamic when you bring in fresh set of eyes into the trip. You can feed off their excitement and intrigue, and it helps rejuvenate your own curiosity for where you are. No, no idea. Yeah, there he goes. It's just been building up excitement. But 
come here and explore, see tons of new things with great people. I'm enjoying it. I love it. It's awesome. We had some other travelers come in and say, hey, there's a soccer game that's getting, sorry, a football game that's getting put together. You guys want to come play? So of course we're like, yeah, we'll come watch and do what we can. Of course, all of us are terrible at football. So we walked a little ways. Here's their soccer field. And uh, I think it's tonight's entertainment. We asked the, the guys who were from the Netherlands, are you good? do you play football a lot? And they, oh no, we're not, not anymore. We used to play at a very high level, but we don't anymore. Actually, my brother still does. So we'll see how this goes. And we're watching them kick the ball around right now and like, Oh yeah, we're gonna get creamed. You guys excited? No. <laughs> I am. This is cool though. This will be I'm excited. I just keep seeing all these people keep coming, so I don't know. Luckily, we have our friends from Holland on our team. The game is chaotic, and I'm not sure if anyone knows who's winning. But at this point, I'm not sure if it even matters. It's a lot of work. And the only time the touch is like two times on accident. Need a lot of endurance to stay in this game. I'm gonna get some water and go in, but whew, it's dry. These guys are fast. I'm so proud of all of them. It sure is fun to watch them. This is really, I think, where I'm getting into the nostalgic part of the trip. I'm looking for a different kind of memory, a, a different kind of experience. Tonight is a night when nothing else in the world matters. A night where many groups of people who are worlds apart came and played a simple game while sharing the sunset together. This is part of the magic of Africa. So today we are going to continue our path north west so that tomorrow we have all day to head into the park and head all the way down via the dune route. Yeah. Cool. Cool. We want to get as close to the gate of the Skeleton Coast Park as possible. Radio 
check. Sequoia is up. Gotcha. Tundra is up. Raven's up. A few hours after leaving White Lady Camp on our way to the Skeleton Coast, we run into a fellow who is not having the best of days. We've got a parked vehicle on the right. Maybe worth asking if he's all right. Looks like he's got it under control, but just in case. Yeah, sounds good. Using rocks as a jack stand. Oh man, that looks gnarly. And go see if we can help these people. Yeah. Looks bad. <laughs> Looks very bad. <laughs> yeah, very not a bad. good day. <laughs> not a good day. No. Came up on this gentleman, and sadly his strut has just blown apart. Uh, looks like the nut came off the top, and uh, then was able to just go loose, and then got the tire loose, and that's what cut the ABS and rubbed into the. But really, the strut's just gone. There's no gas in it anymore. It's not sealed. It quit doing its job. So now we're going to lift it up. Torby's going to lift it up with a bottle jack. And we, we found a nut that'll work. We think will work on top. And we'll just at least get it back together. And he can drive to town slowly uh, where he will be able to replace this, this strut. The funny thing is, is there's two other struts in his car that are also broken. So this is... Uh, pretty common occurrence. The roads are just brutal. Corrugations just bop, 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 bop. Try this. Thanks. Luckily, with all the spare parts and extra suspension components in this local's rear seat, Dwarvi is able to piece the coilover back together and with a little uh, sketchy ingenuity, he was able to reattach the shock to the body of the vehicle and have him back on the road. Seems to be working. <laughs> Off he goes. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, all we have to do today is get to camp. That's our, yeah. So might as well I can go back here help out. Pick up problems on the way. Yeah. Yeah, why not? Roadside service. Torfee's roadside service. The road continues to take victims, and another tourist waves the convoy down. Dorvery's roadside service is open, and business is good. He suspects the sensor is very dirty and needs cleaning. I have just the thing. I might just do the trick. Okay. All right. All the way from Iceland. <laughs> You're not going to spoil that. We need to. We have more. This is the same six bottles that you bought in Iceland, came all the way back to the US, made it all the way to here, and now it's needed to clean this. Some sensors. It's even cold. It is. It was in the <laughs> <laughs> so, I, like I said, uh, no warranty here no <laughs> at all. Torby's roadside service strikes again, though no warranty is guaranteed. But this truck is running smooth again, and they're on their way. The satisfaction of helping others on the road is extremely fulfilling, having the sense you helped someone that was having a bad day and you were able to make it better. It appears we are not alone in the problems today. The rough roads have found us. Rochelle reports that the steering of the Tundra feels off and needs to be looked at. <laughs> he sped more to the, what did she say? She said every time she, let, she got off the gas, it went right. It tracks pretty straight considering that control arm is no longer attached. What? Okay, so that's why I was feeling something. You were definitely feeling something. And I think we only have one bolt with oh. one nut that we bought for in case that happened. Hopefully it's long enough. Great, this is so, so too big. The biggest issue is the bolt is a very specific size and we are having trouble finding a suitable replacement. Small, but 
We have even resorted to scavenging other bolts off of things to attempt to find a temporary fix. Okay. Okay. So I'll show you a couple of the ideas that we had. None of them have been great. The lower control arm bolt came unbolted, rattled out, and fell. So it's not connected to the axle. The axle is just floating back here, essentially held down by the uh, sway bar and the upper, the upper trailing arm. Not good. We cannot drive on this very far. It's a good thing we found it now, otherwise catastrophic accidents could happen because the whole axle can shift. And I don't see any signs of that yet, but it, it must have because we felt, felt like it was floaty. So anyway, we've been looking for all kinds of things for bolts. And either they're too, too round, the ones that we bought at the hardware store. We looked at these, but it's too skinny. It's a very special size. So what we're gonna do, <coughs> they're getting the, the right bolt together and they're gonna come in here and they're gonna put it up there and we're just gonna tighten it down. There will be slop in it, but it'll be tight. That'll get us to town. And then we might go to a scrap yard or something tomorrow and start digging around, find some different parts. Maybe in a Land Cruiser or something will have something. Some Toyota dealer might have something for us. Or Toyota workshop. Yep. <laughs> Mount it up, eh? It's Canadian in me. <laughs> eh? Eh? <laughs> I like it. What do you need, Torby? Uh, the next dealership is a 10 hour drive or more from here. So hopefully, whatever Torby and Richard find Garlic. will get us there. While dinner is prepared during another beautiful evening, Torby finds a temporary bolt to allow us to limp Orion along tomorrow. At least it's in it's right push now. Yep. Hmm. We gotta go find a bolt. <laughs> We have begun early, knowing we have a long drive to limp Orion along until we can find a proper fix. Off we go. We are heading to the Skeleton Coast National Park. It's going to be a great day. I've heard temperatures are cooler and the roads are smoother. So things to look forward to today to get that tundra into town. And a couple miles into our journey into the Skeleton Coast, we are all glad we got up early. This place is incredible. It is magical this morning. Yeah, let me know what kind of pace you would like and we can set it. These roads are feeling good, tundra's feeling good, so whatever you feel comfortable with. Despite the bolt fix, the trucks are running flawlessly. The trucks are proving to be workhorses out here. Beginning immediately south of Angola, the Skeleton Coast stretches from Kanini River to the Swakop River. Although the name is sometimes used to describe the entire Namib Desert Coast. The indigenous sand people of Namibia call the region the land God made in anger. The area's name refers to the whale and seal bones that once littered the shore from past whaling. But in modern times, the coast also harbors the skeletal remains of more than 1,000 shipwrecks caused by offshore rocks and aggressive weather. The winds blow from land to sea, and rainfall rarely exceeds not even a half of an inch annually, and the climate is highly inhospitable. Ah, there's the ocean. There is a constant, heavy surf on the beaches. And in the days before engine-powered ships and boats, it was possible to get ashore through the surf, but impossible to launch from the shore. Love it. Off in the distance, we see the skeleton of an old relic. Holy cow, that's amazing. 
So I, from my map, it looks like it's an old oil drill rig. So that's cool. Ah, oh, an oil drill rig. Okay, wow. Check it out. Yeah, yeah let's roll in there. That's so cool. This abandoned oil rig was left to disintegrate in the sand and salt of the Namib Desert. This rig was in operation from the late 1960s to the 1970s, even after the national park was established. That thing is falling apart like I've never seen any metal be falling apart before. It's an old relic of the past. It is now a decaying wreck that serves as a sanctuary for the local birds to yeah. escape the hostile weather. It is impressive to all of us how fast this metal is deteriorating. This is truly a brutal environment for machines. <sighs> Looks good so far. We'll just keep running on it. Everything seemed tight, uh, but we'll every time we stop, I'll just keep popping out and checking, make sure everything is snug and hand tight. From here, we get to continue south to one of the most famous wrecks of the coast. The Zela got stranded on 25th August 2008 in the early morning hours near Die Whale, a popular fishing spot about 14 kilometers south of Hinty's Bay. Holy cow, that's amazing. Can you imagine just hauling that thing off and then having it break and then seeing it like drift and get lodged? What happened to it again? Yeah, so this is in 2008, uh, a fishing company in Walvis Bay sold it to an Indian company and then they were towing it to go to Bombay, India and it broke off from the tow ship oh. and it just landed here and that's uh -huh. that. It was going to uh, scrap metal. Now it just sits here as a bird nest. Yep. Well, I think we've made our last stop. We've been kind of hunting for shipwrecks. A lot of them are gone. They're starting to be just dismantled by the sea, corroded out and flushed away, so to speak. Yeah, we might yeah, be able to see some cool. coming up, but for today, the one from 2008 was our biggest shipwreck. The Skeleton Coast is a fair warning to the harsh realities of this country. Coming up next is the hardest we have pushed the vehicles on the expedition. The mechanics and the timing needs to be perfect. No mistakes allowed. But that's coming up next. And just like us, you'll have to wait in anticipation of the days ahead. Uh, just a quick radio check with everybody. Tacoma has you. Sequoia, gotcha. Thunder's gotcha. Awesome, thank you very much, guys. Welcome to the Sandwich Harbor Self Drive Tour. Hopefully all of our previous good deeds come around. Some days it feels like radio silence plays in my mind in spaces it shouldn't be. Dude.